Imagine a country so unique that it slices through another country and is often called the smiling coast of Africa. The Gambia, a country that's not only known for its warm smiles, but also holds a rich history that stretches back centuries, from Carthaginian sailors to European traders. In this video, we'll uncover the interesting story of how the Gambia evolved from ancient civilizations and kingdoms to becoming a British colony, gaining independence, and transforming into a country with a size similar to Lebanon, Qatar, Kosovo, and Jamaica. Stay tuned to the end to discover the fascinating journey of the Gambia, a land of smiles with a past as distinct as its people. Plus, we'll explore some detailed history after independence, shedding light on the unique character of this smallest country in continental Africa. Gambia is fondly called the smiling coast of Africa and, well, there are some good reasons for this sobriquet. While many West African countries have large populations and thriving economies, their people often experience hunger, anger, aggression, and agitation over various issues. In contrast, the Gambia is blessed with abundant natural beauty and a sense of contentment that radiates from its people. The Gambia has a long history dating back to 2000 before Christ including visits by Carthaginian sailors in 470 before Christ. Arab and Berber traders played a role in the Sahara trade, and Islam reached the region in the 8th century. European involvement began in 1455 when Portuguese sailors discovered the Gambia River. English merchants entered the scene in 1587, initiating trade in the area and the Royal African Company built a fort on James Island in 1678. However, Control of the Gambia was not stable, and it shifted between British and French hands in 1765. In 1783, much of Senegambia was returned to France, and the River Gambia officially became a British possession. A big moment was the 1807 ban on slave trading within the Gambia, transforming its economy and global relations. In 1888, the Gambia became a distinct British colony with defined borders setting the stage for its struggles and eventual independence in the 20th century. Before we get further into the story of Gambia's independence, let's have a look at its map. When you look at a map of Senegal, you might notice something unusual upon closer inspection. A different country, the Gambia, slices right through the middle of Senegal. This isn't a mistake. It's because the Gambia is mainland Africa's smallest nation and it has a unique shape. Essentially, it's a long, narrow piece of land on either side of the winding Gambia River. This distinctive geography has earned it the nickname of a river country. The country's borders closely follow the course of the river, shaping the nation accordingly. The country extends for about 450 kilometers along the riverbanks, and its width varies significantly. At its widest point, it measures just 48 kilometers, or 29 miles, while at its narrowest, it's only 11 kilometers or 7 miles wide. The Gambia is almost entirely enclosed by Senegal, except for a short 60 kilometer, 37 mile coastline along the Atlantic Ocean. This unique geographical situation only means that Senegalese travelers residing in the northern part of Senegal, who wish to avoid a 10 hour detour around the Gambia, must pass through two separate border checkpoints to re enter their own country. First, they cross from Senegal into the Gambia, and then they go through another checkpoint when returning from the Gambia to Senegal. The curious situation of the Gambia's shape and location has its roots in a fascinating urban legend. During the 18th and 19th centuries, as this region was a significant center for various economic activities, including the transatlantic slave trade, it was also a coveted area for colonial powers like the French and the British, who were competing for power and resources, as we discussed in the start of our video. The British, in particular, had an interest in finding a convenient route inland to Timbuktu and its famous riches. Along the coast of West Africa, there were only a few rivers that extended from the desert to the coast. The mouth of the more northern river, the Senegal River, was controlled by the French. The Gambia River, further south and under more British influence, ran parallel to it. According to the legend, a British warship navigated up the Gambia River, firing cannonballs on both sides as it moved forward. The land that fell within the range of these cannon shots was claimed by the British. 
This legendary account suggests that the locations where these cannonballs landed became the international border of the Gambia. The outcome of this historical process is a country shaped like a river, consisting of distinct strips of land on either side of the riverbanks. The Gambia, with a population of approximately 2.5 million people and a population density of 239 individuals per square kilometer, ranks among the most densely populated nations in Africa. Its economy follows a liberal market-based model, primarily relying on traditional subsistence agriculture and having a historical dependence on peanuts as a major source of export earnings. The existence of the Gambia as a country with an unusual shape is primarily due to the complexities of colonialism in Africa. During the colonial era, European nations divided Africa into territories based on their interests, often creating borders that didn't consider the local geography or communities. That's how Gambia's story really starts, mainly with Portugal being the first European power to claim the Gambia River. The country's name even comes from the Portuguese word Cambio. However, in the 18th century, there were conflicts between the British and the French over trading posts in Senegal and the Gambia. The British sent an expedition and captured French trading posts in Senegal, leading to the creation of the Crown Colony of Senegambia. But when the American War of Independence occupied the British, the French took advantage. They recaptured St. Louis, destroyed the largest British trading post, and took control of the whole region. The unified Senegambia region officially ended in 1783, after the United States won their independence. The Treaty of Versailles, signed alongside the Treaty of Paris that ended the American War of Independence, balanced power between France and Britain in West Africa. France regained St. Louis, Ile de Gorée, and the Senegal River region, while the Gambia remained under British rule. A few decades later, both France and Britain considered a proposal to exchange colonies. The idea was for the French to give up another West African territory to the British in exchange for the Gambia. However, this exchange plan never came to fruition. In 1960, the Protectorate introduced universal adult suffrage, leading to a House of Representatives. The Office of Prime Minister was established in 1962, and the Gambia achieved full internal self-government in 1963. So, in the 20th century, Senegal, which gained independence from France in 1960, and the Gambia, which gained independence from Britain in 1965, faced a big challenge. They had to figure out how to maintain two separate countries in a region where cultural values were deeply shared, and one country was almost entirely surrounded by the other. Periodic discussions about uniting the Gambia and Senegal led to the creation of the Senegambia Confederation between 1982 and 1989. However, this arrangement didn't last, as concerns in the Gambia about losing autonomy led to its dissolution. And that's how the Gambia came to exist, as a separate nation along the Gambia River. In reality, there's very little difference between these two countries, except for their official languages, French in Senegal and English in the Gambia. The people, native languages, cuisine, and religions are largely the same. The division between them mainly stems from their historical colonial rulers.